Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu just recently returned from New York, where he met with U.S. President Donald Trump ahead of their speeches at the U.N. General Assembly. The two discussed stability in the Middle East, as well as the potential for a two-state solution in the near future. But here to help us analyze their discussion just a little bit further is Dr. Chuck Freilich, a senior fellow at the Harvard Belfer Center and the former Deputy National Security Advisor in Israel. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. So I think the, the main topic of concern we can say was, or it's fair to say, um, during the United Nations for Prime Minister Netanyahu was Iran. Now, do you believe that Netanyahu's harsh criticism of the Iranian nuclear accord is actually going to have an impact on you know, Donald Trump's decision as to whether or not he wants to amend the agreement or just throw it away altogether? Well, I don't know that it will have a strong effect, but it may have some. Uh, I think both the prime minister and the president in this case have a rather similar approach towards mm -hmm. the issue. And the president, I think, would like to scrap the deal if he could, but I think he's rapidly finding out that that's not a feasible approach. And the question is how it can be amended, uh, if at all. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I have to say that I'm a strong supporter of the deal. Okay. And I was from day one. I think it is of the bad options that we faced at the time, and that we face today, it is by far the best of them. And it's actually a reasonably do good deal in its own right. You have to ask, it's not a question of the world that we would like to live in, it's mm -hmm. the question of the world that we do live in. And given the options, what can we do if we don't have the deal? Do we want to go the military route? I don't think well, the U.S. But, is going to know, We just it. saw this, this ballistic you know, uh, missile test that Iran just carried out on Saturday over the weekend. Uh, what does that say in terms of whether or not Iran is even going to comply with this deal? Well, the deal or did is not, complying the, with this deal to better. To better the put deal it. did not apply to the, the missile issue or to Iran's various misdeeds in the region. The deal, I believe, very wisely focused on one thing and one thing only, and that was the nuclear issue. From Israel's point of view, that's the only existential issue. It so outweighs everything else that that decision to separate the different issues was a very, I believe, a good one. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, A, how do we make sure that Iran really uh, observes well, the deal? Well, because and they how say do we make the... sure that there's no end to the deal at the end to the 10 to 15 year right, period? Right, so they say these missiles are not capable of carrying nuclear warheads, but is, I mean, what do we know about that? Is that true? Well, from Israel's point of view, the truth is it almost doesn't matter because the shorter range missiles that they right. already have are capable of carrying a nuclear warhead in any event. These newer missiles are a threat to Europe. That's where the, the change is. And maybe it's a larger warhead that could hit Israel. But if they can hit us with a nuke, we're already in bad shape from that point of view. Right. So going back to, you know, the, the idea of amending this deal or throwing it away, Trump said that he already came to a decision, um, but he's not ready to yet release that decision. In your opinion, what is that decision? And does Netanyahu know what that decision is? Did they discuss that while they were at the UN General Assembly? I would imagine that the president, uh, as I said, has come to the conclusion the deal cannot be uh, scrapped. Mm -hmm. It can't even really be amended. What can be done is that we can try and add on an additional agreement so that when this one expires at the end of the 10 to 15 year period, now 8 to 13, that there's a new agreement which says, no, Iran can never go nuclear. Do you That's think there's the going to be thing. something changed in regards to the type of missiles that are being tested? Can there be, you know, like you said, it was nuclear focused, but... It's got nothing to do with this agreement. Now, the question that you're right, asking... Right, well, the qu is there going to be an amendment to change that? Right. Can there be now a change which will mm -hmm. add the, the missile, missile issue right. to the agreement? I, look, I don't think the Iranians are, are going to agree to open up the deal. Why should they, from their point of view? They signed an agreement, a binding agreement two years ago, the International Atomic Energy Agency says that they're observing it. American intelligence, let alone Israeli, says that they're observing it. Why should they agree to open a deal? So I tend to think that the answer to that is no. On the other hand, maybe what can be done is that more pressure can be brought to bear on uh, Iran to cut back the, the missile testing no, program. Regards to sanctions. Maybe there can even be an additional agreement, but I don't think it's opening up the old one. Well, if we had more time, we would get into, you know, the role Israel is going to play in whatever amendments are actually made to uh, this agreement. Uh, but I guess we're just going to have to wait until next time. So you'll have to come back soon. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Chuck Freelich.